we shouldn't be complacent by the fact that there have been no scandals and there's no revelations in the media that actually, actually everything's fine in Scotland. Having said that, I think actually it's a really good time to consider these proposals. I think, you know, in terms of good governance and kind of uh, an even look at these things, uh, best to do it not in a crisis moment when you're reacting to something, but to actually look across the field and think, what can we do here to improve the transparency and accountability of this parliament? I think they're very, very sound principles. And I think proposals around lobbying transparency are completely aligned to the founding principles of this institution, I think would make a real concrete contribution to actually advancing that. The CIPR approach over the last decade and more has been to um, pursue a, a joint approach of um, of transparency and of signing up to the UCPAC register, um, which all CIPR members are required to do, um, and also a, a voluntary code of conduct, which we think sets a very high bar in terms of professional standards of CIPR members. In addition to that, there's a, a suite of um, training and education which is provided by CIPR, which is looking to increase the professionalisation of the, the lobbying industry across the UK. So we feel that the, the voluntary approach um, is working, sets a very high standard, might not be met by any statutory register or code of conduct, and we feel that this voluntary approach um, is, is demonstrating that that approach is working in the fact that there hasn't really been any issues in Scotland over the course of the last 14, 15 years. It captures the lobbying activity. The one that's proposed in Westminster at the moment is a list. It's a list of names and clients. It doesn't show anything, any information about their interaction with government bodies. So it needs to have what people are lobbying on and whom in government they are lobbying. Otherwise, you just have a list of names. Um, so it needs to, if you're going to have transparency in lobbying, it needs to be back, capture the lobbying activity, not just who. The democratic access and tradition in the parliament you know is one of its the processes are one of its strengths but as i said earlier we do have a, pro, uh, a problem with democracy in scotland because we've got a million people nearly disengaged from politics actually mostly in our poorest communities that's where people are not voting at a local government election or a national government election and that's where the disengagement is now i don't think a, a lobbying register is going to make any difference to that. We need to be careful about um, just being realistic about the difference between an organisation whose prime purpose is to lobby, you know, it's well resourced, that is very able to comply with a, a regime because it is someone whose job it is to do so, and a very small charity or community group, a grassroots group, that might forget or that might not get the paperwork because they don't have an office or you know that might uh, be acting in the very best of faith but actually not keep up to date with the register and we maybe have to have some way of trying to distinguish whether there's been administrative oversight or, or you know change of staff that kind of thing um, or whether there, there's some kind of deliberate evasion going on I think I think that's important. Sanctions I would really ask you to think long and hard about that because I come back to the principle Lobbying is a legitimate democratic pursuit. The fact that a scandal only becomes scandalous when one is given access to secret information um, doesn't mean that there aren't uh, things that might be exposed going on. I think for the Electoral Reform Society, all the research that we've done through focus groups and our Democracy Max inquiry shows us that the general public feel that there is an, an opaqueness and a secrecy going on behind politics and they would like more transparency, which would improve their confidence in the process um, and therefore potentially um, increase their involvement in the political sphere, which is something that we are very worried about. I suppose from the society's point of view, certainly we've detected no particular problem uh, with uh, what lobbying uh, is carried out in uh, the Scottish Parliament or with the Scottish Government. Um, I think, though, uh, echoing uh, what Juliet has said, um, in terms of, of maintaining public trust and confidence in the system, um, it, the, uh, the system has to display that it is free from uh, any suggestion that, that there might be a lack of transparency. Uh, and so, therefore, um, uh, I think we, we're in the position where uh, we agree that theoretically, um, uh, whilst there might not be a problem, that doesn't mean to say that uh, additional transparency wouldn't help there, uh, uh, prevent there from being a, a problem emerging in the future. Lobbying, I think, is one of the most contested definitions of any concept in political science. You know, rarely get two scholars that are going to agree with what is meant by it or what's meant by the term lobby group. 
Now, uh, generally, I think an accepted definition would be to the effect of a, lo a lobby group is an individual or an organization which would have shared or vested interests, specific interests, that tries to seek to influence political decisions. Now, it's a very important distinction to make between influencing and seeking to influence. A lobbyist isn't necessarily successful, but they seek to influence. My starting point is I don't think that a register or legislation is the right way to go. So, I, you know, and I think it would be a real displacement of energy and activity and, frankly, taxpayers' money to spend a lot of time doing that, when I think there's a number of other things that you could be doing to address the fundamental issue, which is about confidence and trust in politics and good decision making. The aim and the aspiration of this parliament is to encourage openness and access and a free flow of information and to build understanding. Then the last thing you want is people worrying away about how they're labelled and whether they've complied with the rules before they come and they speak to politicians. Obviously it's important for decision makers to be transparent about who they are meeting with and I absolutely agree that uh, MSP diaries should be made public. But equally, those who are seeking to influence need to bear in mind their responsibilities to be as transparent as they can be also. Um, and I would certainly say that I think a lobbying transparency register would make MSPs uh, to MSPs needs to apply to the code of conduct a lot easier because you would just you would have a basic sort of piece of paper that told you who people were and who they were lobbying on behalf of.